uh, to determine and decide about the order size. Uh, in this case, we use a discrete probability. We have the exact probability for each possible outcome. And we have also one other type of newsboy problem where you will use the normal distribution in the, uh, to, to decide about the, uh, the order size. Uh, we have seen that we found the critical ratio in this case, 71% between 70 and 75, which is between the options of 14 and 15. And uh, as I also mentioned uh, that uh, in this problem, I have considered both 14 and 15 to be correct. We can shortly see how we can find the expected profit, which will uh, can be used to decide uh, between these two alternatives. What is the actual the, the optimal one, even if both of them are uh, well pretty good. So here, let's now assume that we use. 14. We have found the critical ratio. We have uh, decided to use an order size of 14. Uh, I have also uploaded this, uh, this Excel cell sheet today in front of so you can have a look at it after the lecture. Uh, here we have the probabilities. You have the cumulative probability for each of the possible 20 outcomes. If we are ordering 14 um, items, of this magazine, we will have the income shown here for the possible outcomes here. Mm -hmm. If you sell one, you will have an income of eight. If you sell two, an income of 16, and so on. If you sell 14, um, yeah, 14 here, of course this number. If you sell 14, you will have 14 multiplied by the sales price of 8 as the income, which is 112. But if the demand is larger, you will not have any more income because you have only 14 magazines available. The cost will be the same. Independent of what happened, if you are ordering 14 magazines, you will have to pay $3 for each of them. 14 times 3 is 42. And we have the salvage value shown here, that you will get one dollar left for those who is not sold. So, if you sell only one, you have 13 left, which you can sell to the, uh, to the second-hand store. So, by looking at the probabilities for each possible outcomes, and the income, the sales, the cost of purchasing, and the salvage value, we can find the expected profit by the formula here. Income multiplied by 5%, cost multiplied by 5%, and salvage value multiplied by 5%. And then the expected profit in one particular day will be income minus cost plus salvage value. In this case, 38.15. If we rather have decided to use 15 instead of 14. We can go further down and look at this. This is well, more or less the same, but now we have a possible 15 items to sell, which means that you can have an income of 120. Uh, but if the demand is higher than 15, you still will have only 120. Uh, um, dollars which, which is earned. The cost will be 45, independent of the demand. You have decided to buy 15 every month, and then you will have a fixed cost of 45. And the salvage value will still be one, $1 per item which is not sold. So if you have a sales of only one, you will have a salvage value of 14 if you have bought 15. Similar, multiply these three parts of the profit function, income, cost, and salvage value, multiplied by the probability, and sum down here, and find expected profit to be, in this case, 38.25, which is slightly higher than 38.15, as we saw with 14. 
So here, even if, seven, if 71 percent is closer to 70 than to 75, we will have a slightly higher profit if you are ordering more than uh, uh, if you are ordering 15 instead of 14, because this is not symmetric and the profit is so much higher for a potential sales of the 15th magazine uh, than you will eventually lose if you are not able to, to sell that magazine. But as mentioned, for uh, in this uh, problem, um, I have considered both 14 and 15 to be correct. Uh, the textbook says that uh, if uh, you have a discrete amount, that you should always put round. Uh, is that always correct? Uh, no, it's not always correct. It's correct in this case. Uh, does the textbook say that? Say that? Okay, then uh, it's not very bad, but. Uh, uh, you can, well in this case we had 71 versus uh, 70 and 75, you could be even closer and this will also be dependent on uh, the actual values of the sales price and purchase price. So in some case you can be very close to the lowest value and then you can use this method to try to calculate the well, potential uh, possible profits. So, but in, in this course, I don't, uh, well, I haven't shown, there are also a formula to, to show the expected profit, so, uh, uh, but this is not a part of the curriculum in this course. But you should know about this, that if you get a value between two possible values, uh, you should not always round to, to the closest one, but you should ideally check both, potential, uh, bo both options to, to find the optimal, uh, or to find the expected profit. Okay. Then, let's look at the uh, next problem, which is uh, 2C, where you, instead of a newsboy problem, have a QR, lot size reorder point problem. You have to decide both the lot size, the Q value, and the R value, the reorder point. How many items should you have on stock when you place the order. Because you cannot calculate that directly, you will have a stochastic or uncertain demand situation like this. Demand will be uh, different from each cycle. You might even experience that you have a stock out. And what you should decide is the Q value. This should be constant and also the R value, the reorder point, the size of the stock when you are placing a new order. And then you have the lead time, which is the, uh, well, the, the time between the order is placed and the order is received. And you can calculate the expected demand in the lead time as the average demand in this period, but this will not always happen. Here you have a very small demand in the lead time, you will have lots of items left when the order is received. And here you have a very high demand in the lead time and you might even experience a stock out before the order is uh, received. So read through the text very thorough here, get the values of the variables. And here you are given the expected demand in the lead time to be 125. The lead time is three months, which means that the annual demand will be four times the demand in the lead time, 500. Standard deviation in the lead time is also given to be 15% here. So now we should try to find the optimal combination of Q and R. We need to start somewhere. We have some formulas given, which we will see in a short while, but we have to start with a value, and then we can use the EOQ value, which is a pretty good approximation, even in this case with a stochastic demand. So find the E of Q value, EOQ formula, and here in this case, the Q value is 91. This is a good start value. And then let's look at the two formulas, which we should now solve iteratively every other time 
to find the optimal combination of these two variables. So here, using a Q value of 91 in this formula, the H value is given, the P value is given, and the lambda value is given here. Uh, so using a Q value of 91, we will get a value of 1 minus the cumulative value for this particular reorder point. And this is also normal distributed, so it means that you have a normal distribution here. You have the expected demand in the lead time, shown here, and the value, the capital F here, is the cumulative distribution for a given reorder point R, which means that the cumulative distribution is the probability of not getting, uh, getting a stock out. And 1 minus the cumulative uh, distribution will then be the remaining part here, the probability that you will get a stock out, which of course should be as small as possible, or the combination uh, because a, a stock out will, will be costly and the combination of the reorder point, a high reorder point will then be give us a high safety stock which will reduce the probability of getting a stock out and a lower reorder point might give us, well, will give us a higher probability of getting a stock out. And both a stock out and the safety stock will be costly, so that means that we need to find a combination here which will reduce the cost as much as possible. So here, <coughs> using this formula, find the value here, using 91 as the Q value, 0 0.0546. Look up in the normal distribution table, and we have actually two normal distribution tables, but we use A4 here, because here, in this table, we have this particular one minus the cumulative probability in this column here. So we can easily find the value we are looking for in this table and read the corresponding C value, where C will decide the uh, distance from the, ex uh, from the expected uh, demand or the average value. So now we are looking for a value of 0 0.0546, which is here. 0 0.054 is the closest one, which will give us a C value of 1.6, which we again can use. 1.6 and we also can then find the standardized loss function value, the L of C value, which is also one particular column in this uh, table A4 for the normal distribution, which is here called the partial expectations. And then the L of C value is here for the given C value, 0 0.0232. And that value will then be used to find the new and updated value of Q. And when we have a Z value, we can easily calculate the reorder point that corresponds to this Z value. This is also, uh, well, uh, it's a value which will uh, describe the service level, the probability of getting or not getting a stock out. And the reorder point can be calculated by using the average value, which is given to be 125, plus the standard deviation, 15, multiplied by the C value of 1.6. So in this case, 149 is the reorder point that corresponds to this C value of the service level. We can also calculate the expected number of stockouts by using this L function, 0 0.0232, and multiplied by the standard deviation. This 
gives us the expected number of stockouts in one cycle, in one period of, uh, of order here. <coughs> and then we use that one, the n function here, to update the value of q. All the other variable values are given, the lambda is given, the k are given, the p penalty given, the h value, holding cost given. So we have two formulas, this formula and this formula, where the q and the r is dependent on the value of the other variables. Uh, of the other variable. But the other others are constant. The h, the p, and the lambda is constant. So here, to update this value, you only have to change the q. And to update this value, you only have to change the expected number of stockouts for a given r value, which again is dependent on the c value here. Now, calculating this one with this number as the expected number of stockouts, you will get an updated value of q of 97.43. Find the new value of 1 minus f for the given uh, r reorder point. You will now have the value of 0 0.0585. Go back to the normal distribution table. And then we have to go to the previous page, 0 0.0585. Find the closest value, which is this one, and read the corresponding C value, 1.57. And also read the corresponding L of C value, standardized loss function value, which is here 0 0.0249. So we have found these values. We can again calculate the reorder point by this value, 1.57. Standard deviation, still 15. Expected value, 125. 148.55, still, well, let's assume that we round to the closest integer, which actually will give us 149. So theoretically, we could stop here, but we can, well, take one more uh, iterations to be to be sure if we need more accuracy. If we, for example, would like to, uh, well, have more accuracy than the integer values for for the real point, we can just uh, continue here one more iteration. Uh, find the expected number of stockouts by using the L of C value here use that value in the function to update the q value. Order size 97.87, round to, this case, 98. So we are still in the, well, very close to the optimal solution. It depends on how much accuracy we need. And we can take one more iteration to be sure. We actually, we could have stopped here. I have, uh, uh, since you get the same value for, for the reorder point, we could actually st uh, have, have stopped here. Uh, and I will still give the correct answer. But anyway, one more iteration, you will get the same C value, 1.57, and the optimal combination, order 98 items when you have 149 left on stock. This will also mean that you have a safety stock, which is the difference between the reorder point and the demand in the lead time or average demand, which is 149 minus demand in the lead time, 125, which is 24. Safety stock in this case is 24. That means on average, you will have 24 items left on stock when the new order is received. Sometimes you will have more, sometimes you will have less, even stock out, negative inventory, but on average the safety stock will be on 24. Okay, that's problem number two about, uh, about stochastic inventory theory. And then we have one more problem uh, left on this assignment, lot sizing. 
Now we have given 10 weeks with different demand. Known demand, we know exactly what we need, but it's different. It's not a fixed rate. It's now very uh, well, great variation between, well, 11 in week four, 75 in week nine. So the variation bet from week to week is quite different. And we should now try to find the optimal policy for this lot sizing problem. And this lot sizing problem means that you should produce in some periods and not produce in other periods. You have a setup cost k, which is equal to 100. If you are producing in each of the 10 periods, you will have setup costs in every period, 100 multiplied by 10, 1000. Uh, but this will probably be very costly because you will have a better policy by, for example, producing 42 in week one and store 12 of them to, e to week number two. Then you don't need to uh, need to produce in, in week number two you, and you will save the setup cost of 100. Holding cost 0 0.5 per unit per week. Storing one unit in one week will cost you 0 0.5. And then first formulate the problem in lingo, find an optimal lot size schedule for the producer. This is one potential way to create the LP problem and solve it to optimality. Minimize the deltas and the deltas will here describe whether you will have a, a setup in that period or not. Plus, 0.5, the holding cost, multiplied by the inventory level in each of the 10 periods. This is the balancing constraints. The difference between the production in X and the inventory uh, will, uh, will, will then be equal to the demand in the particular period. Uh, or to say it more correctly, the difference between the production and the demand will be stored as inventory. And then if you have some inventory in period one, you will transfer that to period two. And then you might have production. And if you have production, you also need to add the inventory level from the previous period and subtract the current demand. And then the remaining inventory will be stored as inventory in that period. And similar for all the 10 periods. Production plus incoming inventory minus the outgoing inventory should be equal to the demand for that particular period. The next group of, uh, uh, of balancing constraints is the constraints that will tell that if you have production in each of the 10 periods, x is the production variables, the production should not be larger than 401, which is the total number of uh, items to produce in all 10 weeks. If you sum all the values in the requirement column, you will get 401 items, and then you don't need to produce anymore. So this will be a maximum level. And the delta variables will tell whether you have production or not. Delta variables are binary, either zero or one. If the delta variables are zero, you don't have production in that period. And then of course, the x for that period should be zero. Anything multiplied by zero will be zero. And anything smaller than or equal to zero will also be zero if you have uh, also non-negativity. You cannot produce a negative number of items. So the non-negativity will al also be uh, the case for, for these problems. So this is a way to describe and, and formulate the, L, uh, the lot sizing problem in Lingo to, uh, and solve it to optimality. I have also included the other way. I will not go into details here. This is well, more for special interest. You should know about it. You should know that it's possible to solve and, uh, and formulate these types of problems by using a uh, well, programming language or programming-like language, as, um, at least. Uh, 
details of, of this will not be part of the, the curriculum. I will not give such problems on the exam, but you should know that this is possible. And this is a way for those of you who are interested can just study this program and see how this is formulated for the lot sizing problem. And then the solution will look like this. I have also, by the way, uh, uploaded the lingo files in, in front there, so you can find them there, if, so you can just study the, the lingo files and do some changes and see what's happened. But the optimal solution will look like this. Produce in period 1, 3, 6, and 9, and store inventory for the coming periods. This will give you 4 times setup, 400, plus the inventory level, the sum of the inventory levels for all 10 periods, multiplied by 0 0.5, a total cost of 570. And if we compare to the so-called lot-for-lot lot strategy, which is set up in all 10 periods, set up is a cost of 100 multiplied by 10, 1000. This is, of course, much cheaper. So it's much better to have a lot sizing strategy and uh, and um, instead of producing in every period, you should produce more in some period and store to the coming periods. So this is the optimal solution found by Lingo. And of course, optimality will always depend on the accuracy of the parameters. So if, you, if the parameters are wrong then the optimal uh, or inaccurate, then the optimal solution might even not be the best solution. And that's why we also have different heuristics. Uh, silver meal heuristic is one of them. And we could now try to solve the same problem by using the silver meal heuristic. Silver meal heuristic will find the average cost per period starting at one, um, one, one period and including one period more and one period more and so on until the average cost starts to increase. So if we include two periods, 53, the cost is smaller than, or the average cost is smaller than 100, we should continue. If we include three periods, we find the average cost larger than the previous one, then we should stop at two. This means produce in peri uh, period one, you should produce for period one and two. And then continue from period number three. Average cost will be smaller if you include period three and four. If you include period three, four, and five, it will be even smaller. And three, four, five, and six, the average cost per period starts to increase. This number is higher than this one, and then we should stop here. Which means produce for three periods, and you started in period three, which means three, four, and five. And continue from period number six. Period six, include period seven, you will have a lower cost. Include period eight, you will have an even lower cost. Include period nine, and the cost per period starts to increase, uh, to, to increase then we should stop at period eight. So, Produce in period 6 for period 6, 7, and 8, and continue from period number 9, and then we have only two more periods left, 9 and 10, which should be produced together. This gives the solution we can see here, which is also exactly the same as the optimal solution found by Lingo on the, um, <coughs> uh, on the, on the LP problem. And we have one more technique which we should try to use, part period balancing. And here the idea behind this uh, technique is to try to balance the different cost, balance the setup cost with the holding cost. Setup cost is 100 as we remember. Then we should choose the number of periods where the holding cost is closest to the setup cost. Okay, if we in period one include period two, we have total hold holding cost of six. If we include period three, we have total holding cost of 80. Period four, total hold holding cost of 96.5.
and if we also include period 5, a total holding cost of 144.5. Closest to 100 is this one. So with this technique, the solution is in period 1 to produce enough to meet the demand in period 1, 2, 3 and 4. And then start again from period 5. From period 5, if you also include period 6, holding cost is 21. If you include period 7, holding cost is 56. And if you include period 8, the holding cost is 101. This number is now the closest one to the setup cost of 100. Choose that one and then continue from period number 9. Which also here will give us the solution of produce for 9 and 10 together. This is the solution for the part period balancing strategy. Here we have only three setups, 3 times 100, but since the inventory level is so much higher than we saw in the silver mill solution, the total cost will actually be higher, 531.50. So, this means that for this particular example, the part period balancing technique is not as good as the silver mill technique. This might vary from situation to situation, but what is very important to know, the LP solution will always be the optimal. The LP solution will use mathematical techniques to solve the problem to optimality. And if all the parameter values are uh, exactly and all, all there are no uncertainty, uh, of course the, the LP solution will be the optimal one. But sometimes, while it's not easy to estimate the value of the holding cost, uh, there might also be other kinds of uncertainties and in practice actually these uh, uh, lot sizing techniques are still quite commonly uh, used, even if you can solve problems to optimality. Okay, problem D, compare the results of three different techniques and comment the solutions. Also, some theoretical questions, you might also have that on the exam. Try to answer, try to answer short and concise, answer the questions, but not write too much. That will take much of your uh, time on the exam and it will not give you any more credit. So try to answer the questions as short and, and concise, exactly as, good, uh, as possible. Here, silver mill, able to identify the optimal solution. We found the same solution by silver mill as we did by Lingo. Part period balancing, slightly poorer than the optimal. Still a pretty good solution if you compare to a lot for lot strategy. Uh, also, we saw that the silver mill and Lingo solution had smaller lot sizes and four production runs. Part period balancing, three production runs, but then larger lot sizes and, and larger inventory level. Um, what is important to know here, heuristics are not able to see data several periods in advance, but will take decision from a myopic point of view. Consider one new period at a time and then decide according to what you see from that particular point. Uh, in this case, Silver Mill was able to find the optimal solution. This is not always the situation. So, in other cases, other heuristics can be better. Okay, last question. Assume now that the production capacity in any period is limited to the maximal production amount of 100. What changes does this piece of information induce on the optimal solution from A? Then, we could look at the LP problem shown here, if you look at the first part, we could just uh, replace 401 with 100 here, because the production capacity is 100 per period. We cannot utilize the machines or workers anymore, then we can produce 100 items per period. So this is now the maximum uh, capacity shown here for each period, but still the LP formulation will be identical, except from this maximum uh, 
um, production. Still, if the delta is zero, there will be no production, and then, of course, the pr production will be also zero. So, including 100, uh, or uh, exchanging 401 with 100, uh, you can get a solution shown here. Now, we are producing 51, and we can also see that we are not producing exactly the demand for period 1 and 2, but we are producing, so we are storing some inventory into the next period here, period 3. Even if you have inventory, or even if you have production here of 100, the maximum amount, we also have some ingoing inventory from the previous period. This is found by using the LP uh, formulation and solve it into Lingo. Similar, we have production in period 6, we have new production in period 8, but we are storing some inventory here because we cannot produce as much as we actually have wanted in this period. And then, of course, the total cost will increase because now we have five setups compared to four when we were able to produce more than 100. And last question, what happens if the maximum production is 40? And then, of course, we have a total of 401 units in demand in all 10 periods. And if you are able to produce 40 per week, you are only able to produce 400. So you will still lack one unit. So then there is no feasible solution for this problem. Okay, that's the solution for assignment number three. Uh, if you have any question, of course, you can contact me either by email or come to my office. Uh, and then we'll take a break. And then uh, in the last lesson today, I will continue on uh, chapter number eight on operations scheduling techniques. And next Tuesday is the last lecture in, in this course. And then, uh, well, if there, I will might not be finished with the operations scheduling today. So we will finalize that in one week and also show solutions for last year's uh, exam uh, problems. Okay, first a break and then continue on scheduling.